Today on the App Podcast, I bring you Volume 2 of the 2024 NBA offseason episode. I'm joined once again by Sal Sharad family member Julian, a.k.a. Jules the Commish, as well as friend of the podcast and Durham College Basketball Hall of Famer and Sports Hall of Famer, I should say, for that school, Anthony Batchelor. We break down everything else from the offseason. Uh, Paul George going to Philly, Clay Thompson going to the Mavericks, the whiff that the Lakers and the Clippers took. <laughs> um, we get into all of it. A little brawny. Oh, man, we, we get into a lot in this episode, man. It was a lot of jokes. So stay tuned for this one. This should be enjoyable. All right. So as always, Sal Sharav is available wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, tune in Alexa. Make sure you go on that. Amazon Music should be the next one on the horizon. So stay tuned for that as well. If you're Amazon subscriber, that one should be up very shortly. And hit those five stars for me, please. Thank you. One, two, three, four, five. Hit them all. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Hit them five stars. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them. All right. <laughs> and to check out this edition and all my past episodes, make sure you go to the OG website over at SouthShareAve.com. Once again, that is SouthShareAve.com. Calm. This is the Av Podcast with Kyle C on South Sharaf Radio. Let's go. Welcome to the Av Podcast with Cal C on South Sharaf Radio. Uh, welcome to the Av Podcast. Anthony Bachelor. <laughs> Julian, aka Jules of Commish, how you guys doing today? Fine, sir. I'm fine. fine. Yeah, man. So no, so we're we're about to get into um volume two of the of the twenty twenty four NBA off season. Um it hasn't been as as exciting as other years, but I mean from the looks of things we still got some interesting timbits. Uh we we, we uh missed a part of the pregame podcast. We missed some uh some energy coming from Batch right now, but we're we're gonna save the uh, save that part of it for later in the show. We we got to get to the to the biggest free agent of of this off season, which is Paul George. Um, you know, being that the fact that he he finally left the Clippers and signed a four year, two hundred and twelve million dollar deal uh, to go to Philadelphia to join Embiid, Maxi, Nick Nurse, Meek Mill, and the rest of the Seventy Sixers. <laughs> um, but. What do you guys think of Paul George heading to Philly? And and you know what? We'll start off with the energy. Batch, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not sold. Okay. I'm not I'm not sold off of Paul George going to um Philadelphia, but I'm sold by the sneak pickup with Kayla Martin. Um I think Paul George, given that he left the Clippers, it didn't work out with him. But he was the second option on that team, but I feel like very shortly he ended up becoming a third option. Especially with the move with with James Harden, I still feel even with him going to Philadelphia, especially with the uses that they have with MB, and when MB is not playing, or let's, not, let's say not playing, but when that ball's not in his hands, then it goes through Maxi. I don't know where he's where Paul George can get those touches. He's still going to have that same role that he has with the Clippers, so I don't see him being a difference maker by removing Tobias Harris and plugging him in. I personally would have kept Tobias Harris because Tobias Harris, I feel, was more of a uh, a Swiss Army knife. He would do everything else. I feel Paul George is not doing everything else. Do you? St- I don't think he's still that same defensive guy that we once saw, that two way player from Indiana. And that's why I say I'm not really sold on <coughs> to move to Philadelphia. Um. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about I, you? I don't know. What about you, Julian? Well. Firstly, I'm I'm a little shocked that he didn't resign back with the Clippers. Per, yeah, I, I thought he I thought you know what his ask of having the same contract as Kawhi's wasn't that deep of an ask. I thought that was fair. If anything, I thought he was more impactful on the team than Kawhi because of the games played and whatnot. Right. But I was I if I'm Paul, I'm a little bit offended too. I would have been a little bit offended. Um, that being said, um. You know what? I think Philly will make a good run this year. I think they match up better with Boston. Like I'm just looking at matchups here. Yeah. I think they match up better, yeah. better with Boston. Because so Boston's guard heavy, and I think George is more of a he can guard more of a Jalen Brown. I'm not saying he can guard Brown or Tatum, but he's more of a better matchup than 
than Tobias Harris. But overall, I think Philly did is a much better team. The for sure top two, top three in the East. Um, but I, I don't think it's enough to beat Boston. Not enough to get by the Knicks in a seven game series. I don't think so because Embiid, you don't know what you're going to get with Embiid in terms of health, right? So and if and and if Embiid goes, the team goes in my eyes. So. Overall, I think I like it for the East. I like the East getting a little stronger. I think the East will compete with the West this year. And, yeah, overall, I think Philly is going to be top three for sure. As I said recently, I think it's a good move for them in, in comparison to, to the situation that he left. But now that I think more, think about it more and more now, I think it's probably a decent move because I, I thought the Clippers window, to me, it actually closed in 2023. And, and outside of playing in, in the new arena, which is going to be like world class and, you know, playing in your hometown, there really wasn't any incentive for him to stay when you really think of it, because there's no picks. There's no young players to speak of. And their best player can't last throughout the year anymore. And mm. so, and it's funny because I think he's, you know, I said this in the last pod, but I feel like he's trading one injury problem for another. Right. And, yeah. and I think the biggest thing that Paul George has to realize is outside of his game that he's going to be bringing to Philly is that leadership. Is he going to have Embiid's ear? You know what I mean? Can he can he get to Embiid to get himself in shape that's going to be needed to play into June? You know, and, and is Paul George the right player to have Embiid's ear, you know, to play smart in the playoffs as well? Because And I say the smarter part because with all those injuries that Embiid was, was having, you know, I know he went through Bell's palsy. He, you know, he had the... Um, the meniscus tear, what have you, but the way he was playing, it was like it just wasn't smart because as a as a big guy carrying all that that size and stuff that he that he carries with him, coming from the perimeter every time he wants to score a basket is just putting more and more pressure on his knee and his body. Like it just wasn't smart. You know what I mean? So, like at this stage, I'm like, are you are you gonna be that guy now to to like to to get him to to understand? The, the sacrifice that he really has to make for the team, not just playing through injuries, but like actually playing smart. You know what I mean? And being in shape to like last into May and June. And like I said, when you look at these two guys between him and Joker, it's just crazy to think that Joker is in way better shape. But he is. <laughs> but he but is. you got to remember, though, but Joker is also playing in probably the hardest places to play when it comes to conditioning mm-hmm. in Denver. Right. So kind of has an advantage because now – him knowing that for his size, he was like, listen, I have to get myself in shape. I'll do some of my training in Denver, which is already tough to begin with. Mm-hmm. So you have only 41 games in the season where you're playing in Denver. Outside of that, man, I mean, you're pretty much running laps. And you're like, man, I'm not even tired right now. Like, I'm good. Yeah. So I feel that De- the Jokic kind of has an advantage with that. But back to your point in terms of uh, uh, Embiid and with the injuries, well, do we blame this on Embiid? Him not being in, in the in the right form for conditioning, or do we have to also place blame on Nick Nurse? Not saying his coaching style is not is not great. He's got a ring. He's proven himself. But my thing is this: he's almost like Tom, uh, uh, like Thibodeau, mm-hmm. where he's running these guys to the ground, and if, and yeah. beat is showing that he continuously true. every season that he's getting hurt. How do you go ahead and play these guys? the same way you have with seasons previous and even from his record from winning with the Raptors, he was playing these guys high thirties, mid thirties. That's, that's a lot for him And now we have this whole all NBA rule where you got to play 65 game plus. It's kind of hurting him. Yeah. So what, what, what do you do in that sense? Do you say, oh, I'm going to play you 30 minutes? Does MB say, no, I want to play these high minutes because I want to keep on, I want to, I want to keep on being that guy. I feel like it's now going to be, it's going to be a knucklehead approach in terms of one is a coaching system where he feels that it, it works. Then you have another player where he feels that I want to play. So play me, but really it's no, you need to rest. I can't play you crazy minutes. I need you to start spreading it out. So now come to think of it, maybe this is the reason why you bring in Paul George, because when you go ahead and you sit and be for low management, let's call it. Now you have Maxi. And Paul George now going at it that kind of keeps up um, the the pace so that these guys are not having um, losing losing games and keeps them at the top of the standings because remember these guys were in the playing last year at the number seven seat. So I don't know if this is a different approach on how to kind of go at it for the season. Um, but what Julian had mentioned in terms of uh, certain teams they're going against Boston matchup wise, Boston doesn't have a big. 
Mm-hmm. And you know what? I, 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 I think the fit is fine, actually, like between him, Maxi, and and, um, and and George. But like the the George said something interesting to me where I was like, man, it's it kind of scared me with Embiid. And again, you know, I've I've advocated for Embiid pretty much the entirety of this podcast that I've had this, you know, had this these shows. But he said something interesting. I think it was, I believe, it was on his podcast where he said he was talking to to Embiid, and Embiid was saying how, you know, it's going to be great because. You know they'll be able to space the floor, and he'll be able to space uh, space the floor for George. And I'm like, what? What did he say? Shouldn't it be the other what? way around? <laughs> what do you mean he's gonna space the floor? Said, eh? He said he's gonna space the floor for George. And I'm like, I'm thinking, what are you talking about? Like that alone just, made me go like, uh, you know, I, I'm a little I don't nervous. Think, I don't think that's coming from B. I think that's coming from a coaching staff. No, he said, nah, no. He nah. said he spoke to Embiid, and Embiid said this. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that's personally coming from Embiid himself. I think Embiid was listening to the coaching staff saying, hey, this is what our thought process is, and we can make it work so that when they collapse on him, because they are going to collapse on, on Embiid, oh, for sure. when, he goes, when he goes to the post, and I say when he goes to the post, because he shoots way too many threes, because the only way he's going to space on the floor is if he goes to the post. Embiid doesn't like to play at the post, though. That's the problem. So how does this work? They must have spoken to him about this. You really think that Embiid came up with that out on his own, talking about, hey, we're going to space the floor for you to get shots. Buddy, you can't be on a three-point line with him. That don't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Unless you misheard Calvert. <laughs> Unless you misheard hey, maybe, maybe. Did I mean? I, I don't think did you I did. Maybe, I got to listen to the podcast <laughs> again. But, I, but, it, but it made me perk my ears like, what? What did he say? And I'm like, that, I, I mean, I, I hope that's not, that, you know, again, I hope that's not what he meant. But, the, the funny thing is, too, with Embiid is Embiid again. Like the season he had before he had before he got hurt was probably one of the best seasons that you would have seen. But obviously, he didn't finish the season. But where he, the, 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 to, to touch on your point, Batch, he wasn't really shooting that much threes before he got hurt. I felt like after he got hurt, he went back to shooting threes again. Part of it was, to, I guess, to take pressure off of not being in the paint. But I'm like, it didn't make sense at the same time because he's not a. He's not a 40% shooter from three. You know what I mean? So, And his biggest impact, like, they're playing the Knicks. And l- much love to Hardenstein and Robinson. But, like, he's... No, no. He's, no don't, 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 don't disrespect my guy. No, nah, but come on, him. man. He's, he's going to own call those guys. No, you got, you got to call, you gotta call him. But you got to call him Zay, though. Don't, don't call him Hardenstein, though. Call him Zay. <laughs> he's, he's that guy. He deserves that, at least. Call him Zay. <laughs> <laughs> call him Zay, at least. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, he left New York City. He's Isaiah Hardenstein now. <laughs> He's Hardenstein. <laughs> I'm gonna put, I'm gonna say his full name, all pronunciated and everything. Now he left New York. <laughs> He's no longer Zay. <laughs> um, but yeah. but but let me ask you guys another question though. Before we move to the next topic, what? How do you rate the Kawhi Paul George experience in the for those five years in, in Clipperland? <laughs> I think it was forced. So I don't think it was never going to work to begin with because it was. If Paul George was actually speaking the truth in terms of that was going to turn into being Paul George's team joining first forces with uh, Kawhi Leonard in Toronto, I, it makes sense to me as to why he ended up being in Clippers because that came out of nowhere. It absolutely came out of nowhere. It was forced. Even when they're playing together, you can even see it. Listen, Kawhi, Kawhi is a different kind of player. There are two different players, but the way that the Clippers are structured in their team at that, it doesn't work. Kawhi's not a three-point shooter. You have Zubac sitting in the middle. And then you have no one else to help out the two. So where's that third-person scoring coming from? It's almost similar to Dallas. Not comparing these two to Luka and Kyrie. But in the two, they needed one more person because so much attention is on the two players. You can't double-team. You can double-team one, but you're going to be in trouble if you do that. So now you got to have, all right, let's get our best defender to stick Luka Let's just force him to take bad shots because that's all you pretty much can do. Kyrie, it's like, listen, he's going to get what he wants, but we got we to gotta basically, same thing, give him bad shots. But who's the third person to help out to relieve him? They now pick up my man that we're going to speak about later. I'm going to leave that one alone. But <laughs> the Clippers didn't have that third man to give him that. They tried to experiment with Terrence Mann. I feel like Ty, Ty Lue didn't run, really he didn't really want to run with him. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anyone else on the Clippers – that was there to help them out. I mean, they picked up Westbrook, but Westbrook can't shoot. He's just he's just an athletic, an athletic, an athletic guy that can just basically find his way towards that ball 
when need be. But again, he was coming off the bench. But then now they kind of got a taste of it when they picked up James Harden midseason. And even then, it still seemed uncomfortable. It didn't look like it was automatic, like, all right, perfect. We got a third guy here. How are we going to do this? I feel like Paul George kind of got put to the back burner, and he, he just like, you know what? It is what it is. But he, he kept it being, being a professional that he is, but I don't feel like he was accepted to, to the role that he was given being that third guy. What about you, Julian? What is your Clipper experience? You know I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I, loving it because I'm a <laughs> hater. I'm going a, I'm to a claim the, the hating uh, position right here. I was loving it. Absolutely. It was a failure. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. The Uncle Dennis, the idiot. Like, you got to also remember that like, <laughs> they chose Paul George. Yeah, like, Kawhi wanted to go back to L.A. He said, um, he called Paul George. He, I guess they they told him, I think, who was it? Doc was the coach at the time? Was it Doc? Yeah, at the time. Doc, yeah. Whoever was a, He said, who do you want to play with? And he said, um, Paul George. Then they contacted Paul George's agent, OKC. They made it done. So it was their choice to assemble this team, or Kawhi, or Uncle Dennis, or whoever you want to call it. So I'm just loving it. I'm glad that they failed. I'm glad they didn't win any rounds. I'm <laughs> glad that Kawhi, I don't want to say I'm glad that Kawhi got hurt, but I'm glad that it ended up, ended how it ended each season with him playing like 60, 50 games. I'm loving it, and I'm glad that he's gone now. I really think Paul George had enough of, of Kawhi. I don't think he can come out and say it and say like, shoot, like, you know, he's always injured. Or we didn't, we just can't. Between the two of us, we just don't gel. He can't say any of that stuff. He's saying everything positive about the, his experience and playing with Kawhi. But I think a part of him wants to go and win. I think a part of him wants to go, and he realized he's not going to win there. My other point about Paul George going to Philly, I know we're off that topic, there was not really many other options. He wanted to go to Golden State, don't forget. I told you my brother said he was there. He was had yeah. meetings. He wanted to go there. But the Clippers didn't want to trade him to um, yeah, go to state. Team. I guess they want. It's a divisional team. Pardon me. Yeah. It's a divisional yeah, team. Yeah. So they didn't. Yeah. And he did say in his podcast that was his first choice because mm-hmm. he wanted to stay in the West Coast, right? He's from LA. He didn't want to come across the East. Him coming across to the East shows you that there wasn't many options like for him to win and stay on the West Coast. So come if you come to the East, where are you really going to go? It's only really Philly and Orlando, and I, I didn't think he was going to go to Orlando. But anyhow, I'm loving it. I'm glad they failed. I'm glad Kawhi failed. I'm glad the Clippers failed. Damn. I'm glad Doc failed. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, man. Julian, do you hate the way he walks, the way he dresses as well? I hate everything about him. <laughs> everything. Not about Paul George and Kawhi. I'm just so happy, man. I'm happy and nothing worked out. I'm, I like Paul George as, as, as a player, though. I'm not against him, but I'm just glad that the whole organization failed. Sounds like this sounds like your version should of a pop up concert. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> what the hell? I think, Yo, we talk, I, think, hey. I think you need to talk about the Lakers free agency now. I think that's a perfect segue to this now. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you know what? Before before we do that though, we'll we'll get to them though. But before we do that though, I, I have I have a list of some of the, the, the Clippers' biggest moments in the in the George uh Kawhi era. Um I think number one, and this is in no particular order, when they shocked the world and went to the Clippers in a manner that they did, because people forget how crazy that shit was. I mean, think about it. Five years ago, you know, we all live in Toronto. We're, we're high, literally high, high off the ecstasy of winning that championship, celebrating, you know, within the city. Everything was, uh, was we're, we're just waiting on pins and needles, just waiting to, for Kawhi to make the decision to come back so we can run this back. And then my man orchestrated one of the biggest coups in history. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, yo, because remember, Paul George wasn't a free agent. They had to, they had no, to trade. Not- they traded the whole future for him just for him to, to commit oh. to the Clippers. It was crazy. Sorry, if I remember the backstory, I don't think Paul George and Kawhi, were, they weren't tight. Like, when Kawhi called him and was like, yo, I want you to play. He said he was shocked. He was like, whoa, like, where the mm-hmm. hell is this coming from? You know what I mean? And then he decided to go with it because it's like it gives him the opportunity to come back home. He just saw what Kawhi did. So it's like you're thinking, man, in the next couple of years, the future is going to be bright. Why, why the hell not? I think he did want to stay in L.A., but, I mean, the money that they're offering, I agree. I, I, didn't, I didn't see why they couldn't give him that same money. Like, that, what was the big deal with that? I, I, didn't, I think it was that one year. I think, 
Yeah, Kawhi had four years, and they were only offering PG three. Oh, okay, I, I thought Kawhi something was, like that. I thought Kawhi was three years, uh, one fifty. Was three? Yeah, I think it was three years. Okay, okay my mistake. Well, I just know it was. It's the same, yeah. so maybe it's, I guess it's the dollar amount. But. Yeah, but it, but it was it was interesting to see. But like to me, that was that was one. The other one was the bubble implosion. I know y'all know what I'm talking about with that because that was that was an, an historic collapse. Going what, what were they, three, they were up three one against the the Nuggets, and <laughs> they completely collapsed in the bubble. And, and I know that bubble is going to be its own thirty for thirty one day, but that was catastrophic the way they they collapse especially that game seven and and i think the lasting image of that is paul george taking that open three and hitting it off the side of the backboard that's like (laughs) that's that that is like a forever moment that's that's etched in my brain in in that era um the the western conference finals trip they made in the, the year after in 2021 which i think they had a really great chance to win it all i think that was actually their best chance but then you know Kawhi tore his knee and then that, that was it after that. The fact that they still made it to the conference finals, I think, was was huge. You know what I mean? And then um, mm-hmm. the also the – I think my fourth point is the also the, uh, the the many injuries between him and Kawhi. And then my fifth point is revert back to points one through four. There wasn't really anything exciting <laughs> about this, this, this experience. <laughs> it really wasn't, man. Like, you know, you, you look back on it, so it's it, it was a failure because, like, there wasn't really any big moments to it. It was just more disappointment than anything else. And I know a lot of Raptors fans, like Julian, is, is shit happy. They're, he's dancing on crazy right now. But, I mean, it is what it is, man. It's, it's unfortunate because, like I said, I still like Kawhi, but, like, I'm, 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 I'm him and Embiid, I'm, like, I'm kind of getting ready to toss him off my mad wagon, man. Like I, I'm, I've, I've kind of had it with the two of them in terms of their health. It's unfortunate. Hold, hold on, it is what it is. Wait, 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 wait. I need you to say that one more time. What'd you say? No, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna stay ignorant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not giving you the satisfaction. Um, okay. <laughs> my ne- my next question is: Does Denver losing uh, KCP, Contavious Caldwell Pope, knock them down a peg from the top tier? I'll start with you, Julian. No, 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 it don't. It, it knocks them down, but not from the top tier, like top tier, uh, echelon of the West. Mm. Definitely not. They they will miss his three-point shooting and his um and his D, right? He was like, yeah. the, he was their stopper, I guess, if you want to call that. Um, so they're going to miss that. And then they're hoping to plug in Braun, I think, or yeah, Chris Braun or whatever, to to uh, to, to uh, step up. And he might. Like, it's his third year, and I, I actually like him offensively. But they're not going to be dropped. As long as you have Joker, Gordon... Porter, Jamal, that's the core, right? That's the four right there. So they're going to be fine. I, and I think that actually, I think they're going to still going to come out from the West next year after that defeat. To I, I don't know how they lost to Minnesota. Like, it's a matchup problem, right? It's all about matchups. But I think when they play Minnesota again, if they do face Minnesota again, I don't think they're going to go down. Um, well, were they down 2 nothing? I think it was 2-1, two, 2-1. Two, yeah, they were, they were Two nothing. Yeah, that's not gonna happen again. I still think they're gonna come out in the West for sure. So no, K- losing KCP was a blow, but not to the point where he's like a all star that we got to worry about. That they got to fill in. There are other role players that will fill in. Just like how Chris was it um Bruce Brown left. They're gonna find players, man. They're they're fine. Well, yeah. it's it's interesting because I I, I felt like losing Brown. I felt like it kind of hurt them going into the playoffs. To be honest with you, but go on, Bash. Uh, you, you you take you can take this point. I'll I'll, I'll jump in. I uh, no, nah, I, I feel that it does hurt them. I mean, I think Minnesota's a better team than Denver personally, and and that's considering the matchups at that. I think Denver yeah. got ahead because of the home court advantage. Um, Minnesota finally figured it out. And made the adjustments, and huge with using using uh, Kyle Anderson. Um, I think that changed up the whole dynamics with how Minnesota was going to, how they ended up winning that whole series. Um, basically, you got to is you got to pick, you got to pick. Do you let Jokic pretty much just be Jokic, and you just say, listen, we got to figure out what to do with the others? And basically, it was, listen, we got to slow down Jamal Murray. If Jokic doesn't have anybody else to help him out, what do you do? Um, Though the next person you have on Denver, you have uh, Aaron Gordon. I feel that he's not enough to take over the scoring load or take over the, as a second option if Jamal Murray is having so much attention put on him, um, either through uh, Jay, Jay McDaniels or um, 
uh, Kyle Anderson, or well, he's gone now. So um, basically, now it's uh, Nikhil Alexander, McDaniel's, mm-hmm. and possibly, um, I guess Anthony Edwards when need be because he's he's not he didn't shy away from that challenge either. But who do you have next with Denver? Again, it's it's back to that second and third option, and Denver doesn't really have a third option now. Now they just have a. I mean, a second option, but now I'm. Well, the second option is Murray. But second option is Murray. But if you're if you're spending your time trying to set him down and you're letting Jokic be Jokic, I guess the third option really you're looking at now Michael Porter Jr. But at the same time, Michael Porter Jr. also has injuries. Last season he did well. He played majority of this majority of the games last season, but he still has that back injury, and you don't know you don't know what to expect with that. Yeah. And that's the it's the it's the unknown. That's what makes it kind of like all right. I can't for sure saying, listen, I know for a fact Denver's going to go through the regular season, do what they need to do, place between one and three, and take it from there and knock out teams. Not saying with ease, but be able to knock out teams and be able to get to NBA Finals. The West is tough. And, man, these there's a lot of teams that are stacked right now. And I feel like Denver, they're still a good team, but I don't think they're good enough. All right. All right. Hey, the, one, one point I will make. I think Denver is a, is a unique team because they do have a joker, meaning they don't they don't really need a third or fourth scorer. They need a one two punch, like Jamal and thing. And I say that because Joker distributes the ball and he makes everybody better. Yeah. He's not like your your typical big three when they have three scorers. You don't need that with Denver. Like Joker, fine. He, was, he was making KCP look good, Gordon look good. Brown, Bruce Brown got a huge contract. He's making everybody look good. As long as they're on the floor, as long as he's on the floor and you're running with him, he'll he'll find you. He'll make the right plays, make the right passes. So for me, that's why I think Denver is going to be just fine losing KCP. Even though, what if you, I mean, what if you're shadowing Jamal Murray? Well, I know that ball's coming to him. So as long as I make sure he doesn't get the ball, who does Jokic give it to now? Well, if he's in the paint or like where if he's bringing up the ball, like. Yeah, there, there's. Did you not see what Gordon did in the playoffs last year? Like he was playing on a higher level. Not only was he defending, he was scoring, he was rebounding, and so like guys like that. Like Gordon is a much better player on Denver than when he was on Orlando. But against so, Minnesota, because you got a seven foot, you got a seven footer sitting there waiting. So the rebounding is already taken away. Now yeah, the matchups is, was difficult. Yeah, they matched up well. Minnesota, I think they designed their team to beat Denver. And they did. Oh no, they did. And they got smoked by yeah, and they got smoked by Dallas, which I didn't even see coming. I didn't think they'll get smoked like that because Dallas is more guard guard heavy, right? Like right. Kyrie and Luca. Well, Luca's not. Yeah, Luca's a guard, right? So they got they got manhandled in five games I, or whatever. So I, I I think Denver. I think they come back next year and they're going to be more prepared for a team like Minnesota. Me personally, losing KCP, yeah, it's going to hurt them. But I really like Bron. I, like I'm not saying he's going to be. A KCP um, shutdown player, like like defensively, but I think offensively, like KCP wasn't putting up a lot of points. Eh? Let's let's be clear, he mm-hmm. was just proficient at hitting that three ball, that open yeah. three shot, and, three and, ball. And so he, they're gonna miss that. And he didn't help himself too with the way that he was, uh, you know, because some of those playoff games, especially Game Six and Game Seven, he disappeared offensively. Like it, it was yeah, the only yeah. one that performed in Game Seven, especially after the second half of the second quarter, was basically uh, Jokic and Murray. Everybody else disappeared, mm-hmm. right? Including including Aaron Gordon too, right? Like it was yeah. so like that matchup. That's the thing with the league sometimes, right? Sometimes it's, you know you, you you could you can wipe out everybody, but the matchups is what you avoid, right? The teams that that match up with you well, if you can avoid them, you know that's why that seating thing is important sometimes, right? It's not so much about home court advantage as much as it is. I don't want to see those guys until the at least to the conference finals if we can avoid it. You know what I mean? We might win a game here, might lose a game here, just so we can avoid that matchup. And I mean, yeah. I, I think Denver has to kind of prepare for that too because it, it was crazy watching like Joker. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's not like Joker is this athletic specimen, but watching him getting his shit punched, you know, <laughs> on a few occasions, especially towards the end of Game Seven, was it was wild, man. <laughs> like it was it was wild to see. But but I think this. But I was I was gonna mention. It, don't forget, it did go to seven games. No, no, for like, sure. Minnesota for just sure. didn't walk away, like walk on them. So like, mm-hmm. listen, they could. Denver can e- not easy. They can beat Minnesota. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they do beat them. How about that next year? I think it's just the way they lost Game Seven. Because remember, they're up twenty and they lost by like ten or fifteen, right? Like that swing was yeah. was heavy, right? 
and and, and, and I mean, I was, and, and that wasn't the first time uh, Minnesota put it to them that way in that manner. You know what I mean? So that's the part where, like, you, if you're Denver, you're a little nervous. You know what I mean? At this, at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Minnesota won the first two games in Denver. Yeah. Right. So that 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 swing in itself was, should make you nervous. Yeah. But then I think many. I mean, Dow, I mean, Denver won the next three, right? Didn't Denver win the next three? Yeah. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they, they went did. back. Yeah, and then yeah, and they went back. So like it was a lot of swings in the entire series, yeah. and 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 in games. But the point is, it was close. So yeah. and Jamal didn't really have his best series either, maybe because yeah. of defense or whatnot. But he didn't really have his best series. I know, either. I know his calf was so, hurting him too, right? I, I believe. At, 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 yeah, at, he didn't look. He didn't look like. He didn't look the same. But but I do think this is a big loss because, like I said, you know, having lo- losing two of your your major role players in back to back summers. I mean, and this loss hurts a little bit more just because of the intangibles that KCP brings. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially the championship know-how. Someone that knows the system really well can play out Joker. He's a perfect 3 and D guy for that offense. He's a big guard. He's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, you know what I mean? I, I didn't realize Braun was that tall, too. Braun's about 6'6". Six, six. I'm like, oh, wow. I thought he was a little shorter than that. Yep. No, yeah. no, no. He has good height for his yeah. for guard. You know, but but I think, you know, obviously he's going to be the next logical step. So I think this summer is a, is a big summer in terms of how he trains because he has to be prepared for – be prepared, sorry, for a much bigger role this year, right, especially in terms of starting. But, I mean, they, so prior, you- they, they prioritize their core, which is what you want to do, especially with the way the NBA is now. Like, you're going to lose some guys. It's almost going to be like, like football, like the NFL, where it's like as much as you want to keep everybody from your championship core, that salary cap – and, and and I guess in the case of the NBA, the the taxes from this salary cap, that luxury tax, is hitting so hard that like you're gonna lose certain players. You know, it's just, it's just inevitable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you can keep a core, I think that's what you're gonna be seeing more and more of, right? Like they they have a core, their core four, and it's like you gotta stick to it and just however it rolls out is however it rolls out. You know, but so, so go ahead. Can I can I ask a question? Go ahead. Do you? Do you start Bron or do you keep him off? Um, do you keep him off the bench? Oh, you got to start him. I think you because have to start him. honestly, the because they don't have a bench. <laughs> okay. Think, well, I no, think, I don't think they have a bench right now. To be well, honest. they they have one person. I would say if you're going to get rid and Cal, I swear to goodness, if you start drafting these guys, this is why I'm like doing these little these little podcasts sometimes because <laughs> I feel like you start taking little tips and you put them on your fantasy team. And I don't like it, but <laughs> I will say this though: if that is the case. Then that means you got to start. There's a Peyton Watton sighting that you got to look out mm-hmm. for them because he's the next man up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Whether yeah, he starts yeah, to come yeah. out, is he bench, ready? Whether he starts to comes out the bench, he is the next man up. Yeah, yeah, he's six man if anything, which mm-hmm. is great for him and his development and whatnot. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't. He I can't, think Braun definitely starts. He can't live off those commercials alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. Oh man. <laughs> But but it's funny because you know I was laughing at a certain point watching the finals because you know I, I, my first initial thought was like Joker's probably watching this in Serbia being pissed seeing Dallas perform the way they performed in the finals, but then oh, watching man. him live his best life this off season tells me I don't know if he really cares. Like I don't he, think so. I think he's worried about them horses, man. Yeah, he ain't worried about that. Yo, yo, honestly, I think he might be the first player to to possibly reject a four hundred million dollar contract just to go play with them horses. Like I, I think, I think, I think, I, he might, people... I think he might sign that big, that major contract. But I think that might actually yeah. might be his last contract. Mm. Like, seriously, so? I, I don't, I just don't know with him, man. Like he doesn't seem like a guy. Like, like I mean, the 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 legendary thing that happened with him after they won last year is is when they were announcing the parade, and he was like, "The parade? You mean I got to stay here two, three more days? Like, <laughs> I want to go home. Like the season's over. Like, what? What are you talking about? Like, he was actually annoyed, and then of course he enjoyed the parade and stuff after. But like, he treats it like, like I'm not saying he doesn't take his his job seriously. We know he does. But once the season is over, like he completely disconnects. <clears throat> yeah, I love it. I love it. Which I think it's is like, healthy. It's like, I actually it's think like, it's healthy. It's like, it's like being in school. That bell rings. Last day of school, buddy. I'm not thinking about that classroom no more. Nope. Hey, it's the moment that hey, it's three o'clock, buddy. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'll see you guys next year, man. That's how he takes it. That's how he really and, takes and, it. And and when the season is start, like in or school starting, whatnot, he's not distracted by anything else outside of that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I think he has no real distractions in the in the U S. while he's here playing ball. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like girls or club, strip clubs or partying. Like mm-hmm. he's just playing ball. He's just hooping. 
I mean, I love I, it. I, other than his brothers fighting in the crowd, but I mean, I think they, 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 they're okay with that. <laughs> hey, but you, yeah. need, you need that. Hey, yeah. Ooh, anybody toss you crazy, let me know. I'll deal with them. Mm-hmm. Ugh, that mm-hmm. man. Yeah. He, he, that. Yeah. Right. He's got no worries, man. He ain't got to worry about nothing. Bro, them boys, no. them boys, <laughs> them boys are humongous, man. Oh, my God. Them boys are humongous. Like they're they're like they're like two Thanoses. They're they're crazy. Like honestly, like because there's there's two. One is like one's got to be about four hundred pounds, but he doesn't look fat. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's, like it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like it, it, you're right. Like the, the the security he has within his bloodline alone, he's like he's good in Denver for a very long time. Ain't nobody trying to mess with him. Like. That legend, right. that that legendary thing with the with the Morris twins, and and uh, the other Morris that didn't get knocked down was uh, was talking all that <laughs> shit. You're just like, bro, you you. I don't think you guys want any of that, like at all. That's, just just let it go. That's crazy. And the cast kind of came off crazy with some of the things they was doing before all that stuff popped off. Anyways, and they supposed to be from Philly, and you ain't hear a peep from them after that whole. <laughs> <just been> <laughs> that crazy. That's so crazy. <laughs> Yo, did, did uh, Isaiah Hartlestein give up his con- uh, his construction symbols for the Midwest? No. You think he kept them? <laughs> He's still wearing them Tim's. What oh, laces out? What are you talking about? Man, he ain't tying them things up. What are you talking about right now? Man, he, man, he taught he tossed some shits to to somebody in Brooklyn. It's 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 not, it's, not, it's not a Brooklyn it's not a Brooklyn brownstone right now. He's but, probably but, finding he's probably finding a street light to do pull ups on. Okay, let me. Somebody answer me this because I'm assuming you're going to go on to that topic. Right. Is he really worth that money? I think so because he's been showing it from when he was with the Clippers. That's my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. This is nothing new. This was expected. Yeah, he if you've been following really? him from when he. You didn't get the time with the Clippers. It, yeah, if you yeah. were following him from when he was the Clippers, he was showing these signs. It's not like this just came out of nowhere. He was that guy. He was doing some things where he was like, you know what? This is your role. And he just fed into it. He's like, okay, I'll, this is what you want me to do. I'll do that. He's not looking for touches. He's like, listen, I'll be the guy to be on the defensive side. I'll be that guy to clean up on the boards. I'll be that whatever whatever you need me to be, I'll be that guy. And no complaints whatsoever. And he fit in well with that whole New York system, especially when it was just pretty much on a, listen, we're going to go through Jalen Brunson. And then you have yeah. Wayne going down. You had OG going down. And he still continued playing that role and exceeded in it. I think he did. Okay, so do you prefer him over a healthy Mitchell? Yes, 100%. Really? Because I feel that Isaiah is probably more mobile on the perimeter, if anything. I think he can get off on the, uh, not got off, but I think he's able to, if it comes to the pick and roll, yeah. I feel that he'd be able to recover better than, he, than Mitchell Robinson would. And then obviously because of the whole history with injuries, yes, mm-hmm. I, I believe more in Isaiah. Mind you, don't get me wrong, I think Mitchell Robinson is a good player too, but I don't think he's on the same level when it comes to actually being able to defend today's NBA. Okay, interesting. I, I'm only asking that because of the money he got, and mm-hmm. then now I'm looking at like the Western, Co- like the West Coast uh, early rankings, and they got OKC number number two, number two ranked team, like to finish like top two. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm like, wow, wow, all because of one side. Like, no, don't get me wrong, like they played well last year, they went far last year, and. They're missing that one big man, but I didn't think that was a piece to solidify well, number two. Well, let's remember OKC's biggest flaw was rebounding. So yeah, now no, I get in, that. Yeah, plugging yeah. in Hassan. <laughs> sorry, plugging in Zay. Yeah, you getting the <laughs> rebound. <laughs> you you getting the rebounding side now and then. Now you don't have to depend on on what's his Zay. name. Yeah, to play the five, he can play the four and just score. Exactly. And, so now you kind of, now you stretch mm-hmm. out the floor. So now you have Hardenstein basically sitting down there. You have Chet, uh, Chet uh, stretching out the floor. You got Shea doing what he wants to do. Then you got Jalen Williams, and then you got Dort. Ugh, man, and that's Caruso big. and Caruso now. And Caruso. Legend. So Caruso. I've been seeing. Now, we're not even touching the bench yet. So the starting five alone, man, I, those guys are deep, man. And the, the thing is, they already have these little small players. I shouldn't say small players. They have these. Role players, yeah, in the bench in terms of Wiggins, yeah. um, mm-hmm. Case you got the, Case of, there Case you go, Wallace, sorry, Case of Wallace, Carson, yeah, Case of Wallace, and then you got the other um, Jalen Williams, yeah, um, the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying so. It's now it's it's kind of theirs for the taking because I feel that for them, who who do they lose to again? Uh, Giddy Dallas, they lost to Dallas. 
Dallas, all of a sudden lose to, sorry, I thought who did. Yeah, yeah. So and I think and I Dallas. think Dallas, Dallas is Dallas is, I think their positive was, they became a better defensive team because with the additions of PJ Washington, and um, what's my man Gafford, uh, or Gafford, right. or whatever. Yeah, right. right. You yeah. got Gafford, and then the thing is, we all slept on Lively because he really he was injured, and then he kind of got plugged back in and started playing major minutes, and then they played him more and kind of gave Gafford more of the, 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 the role player, like the backup center. It's crazy because they can switch it up. But now if you go ahead and you have Harlstein now uh, sitting sitting there on the five, now you're going to you're gonna create a problem now with, with Dallas because now it's going to be like, all right, well, who's going to clean up the glass on the offensive end? It's not going to be Dallas. Now it's going to be the defensive side where OKC now doesn't hurt on that, on that end. And now you can just push the ball on the on the receiving end, so it's it, it is better. But at the same time, if you got someone like they're picking, I, mean, I gotta say, man, you got Clay Thompson being that third guy that shooting threes and they miss. That's a long rebound. Mm. That might be the disadvantage now if we're looking at that side of things. Well, it's gonna be interesting. A yep. couple of things. Number one, you 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 you, you want to call him Zay, but you keep calling him Hardelstein. There you go. No, no, <laughs> you go. Get no, 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 no. For the, for, for the purpose for the purposes of this discussion, by means I will call my man Zay because he is Zay. He he des- he deserved it. What that boy? Listen, hey, that's Zay. That's Zay. What well, what was the biggest shock to of, of this past season was the way that he implemented himself to New York City or finding out that his father's black. I think five. <laughs> his, father, his father's black. I would never have known that, but it's not at all because his swag is different. <laughs> his I, swag I was, is so I was like, shocked by that. <laughs> I was, the moment you, you when you told me that I was like, "Damn, I'm not surprised by that," <laughs> but I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. No, but oh, but but honestly, I I think I believe to me it's it's actually the most underrated free agency pickup of the off season to me. Um, like they they financially had to set up their core just in, in point of what I was making before. And Giddy was the odd, you know, the odd man out, despite his playmaking and you know his, um, you know his situation outside the court. But we won't get into mm-hmm. that. But like getting someone, you know, getting somebody for for him in terms of Caruso without giving up anything big was huge. You know, they needed some more vets because they're such a young team. You know, and and Caruso is one of the best veteran role playing guards in the league, especially defensively, yeah. right? But mm-hmm. but to me, to all your points that you guys are making, this this Zay pickup to me was huge. They needed more size. His game is actually perfect for what they need. He is going to be missed in New York because um, you know, well, Mitchell Robinson, like he's um, as much as I like him, he he can't stay healthy either, right? No. But but I think a- OKC like they're in the driver's seat still because with all of those picks, they're going to have time to flip those picks for for better fits around their core guys. Like to me, their OKC is one more year away from being a, a really serious championship contender, and depending on how these guys flow, that might be the, that that might be this year. We, well, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens, but I think they're like they're one more year away to me. But like it, it you know that that might be fast tracked a little bit. You know what I mean? So like it's it's interesting to see that that pickup. But to me, that was when they when he went there, I was like, oh, that's that's low key one of the biggest pickups of the free, of, of the off season right there. You know what I mean? It, it, I yeah, mean, yeah. And, and for the money, to answer your question before, Julian, I think it actually is worth the money because how much was it? How much is it? Uh, three years, eighty-seven million dollars. So he's making about twenty-nine oh. a year. But again, well worth. But but again, based on where the cap is going to be going in the next couple of years with this TV contract and everything else, it's peanuts. It's, yeah, it's it's going to be. Look, OJ OG got a two hundred and twelve million dollar deal, man. That's crazy. So he, that is so crazy. OG's making forty two million dollars a year. So he's making twenty nine. It's I mean, that's okay. That's gonna trust me, that's gonna be on the low end in about three years. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Or like in a couple of years, not even three years, in a couple yeah. of years, that's that's gonna be on the low end. Like that's gonna be that's probably gonna be on the low end of a of, of what you pay a starter in the NBA. Which is insane to say, but like that's where we are now with this league and, and this and this T V contract is nuts. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, with with that said, though, did um, my next question before we get into the winners and losers and wrap up the pod? Um, what do you guys think about this, this the Clay Thompson situation moving to KC? Did Clay Thompson fuck up? No. 
In terms of going to Dallas? Yeah, like what do you, what do you guys think of that? And I, and I say this because was it about the money or a better opportunity? Because opportunity. because because if you guys remember, um, it, you know when the, at the beginning of the year he got offered, he rejected a um, a two year forty eight million dollar deal. And now oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 right. So yeah, is it it. money or opportunity? So that I'll let you guys go. Go ahead. No no let's let's be clear. He fucked up. Like he did not think his. He didn't think he was going to have the season that he had last year. No, right? I don't think so. He was he was betting on himself. Um, he'll be um, another All Star year, blah blah blah. But it just never turned out that way. So he lost he, he lost that bet. I think in free agency, Golden State told him, "We're not giving you the money that you think you you deserve, right? Ten year or whatever you think that you that we owe you." Because you played with us and blah, blah, blah. We're not giving you the money. And I'm thinking, I think he's he's fortunate to get what he got in Dallas. Like, I think he was, like, not the same player last year. Not even close. Like, like I owned him in fantasy. He was not the same player. I was trying to trade him and nobody would take him. I mean, I would But um, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> uh, he might get a few more looks in Dallas, like playing with Kyrie, being open, and Luka finding him and whatnot. And I think he's going to resurrect a little bit. But I think... It doesn't move the needle for Dallas. I don't think so. I don't think so. And but going back to your question, I think it's he lost. He's definitely a loser. I mean, in terms of free agency and and what ended up happening in this off season, because I don't think he saw this coming. But hey, he got his money. He got three years, right? Yeah. He got three years in Dallas. It's a great landing spot, tax free, right? There's no taxes tax in free. Dallas. He'll so make some more money tax. on that. No state income tax. Yeah, right. So sorry, yeah. No no state income tax. So and Dallas is a is a winning franchise. Like they went to the finals, right? So it's a great spot for him. Yeah. And I'm happy for him, but he's not the same player. I I just I, I disagree. I Explain. I personally feel that the signs were given to him that his services were not basically welcomed anymore. Uh, I feel like that might be a little too far fetched in terms of being welcomed, but in terms of how Golden State is moving, we got players that are getting older. Steph is getting older. Clay is getting older. And the reason why I'm leaving this one person last on this list is Draymond. And Draymond got his extension before him. Mm-hmm. I find that to be an insult. Because after Draymond got his increase, after he got his extension, he was still moving like a knucklehead. Which doesn't make sense to me. Like some of the things that he was doing, the antics that he was pulling, mind you, the whole Jordan Poole thing, I don't know what happened on that floor. Maybe he did say something that crossed the line. But at the end of the day, you're vetting. You should not be moving in such ways. Then we get to the regular season, and this guy's throwing these haymakers, choking players out. What's going on right now? Is yeah, there something that, that we don't know crazy. about? But the only person that will know about these issues would be someone such as Clay because he's around him all the time. So by a team saying, listen, we're going to pay him and not you. I feel that was a, the first sign saying, listen, we're, we're, we're going to go a different direction, but we're going to go in the direction of these two here, but we don't necessarily need you anymore. And then also during the season, you have someone in Kaminga where Kaminga does, and, and Clay Thompson don't play the same position, but they could. They can keep Kaminga at the small forward as opposed to the power forward position, and that takes away from, from Clay, but also I think – with again, Clay is on the practice score with all these players. You got Padinsky, whatever how you say his name, Pazinski. Mm-hmm. He sees this guy thriving. Clay Thompson is not an idiot. He's pretty much going to say, "Listen, as a business, you want youth. Any team would want youth over someone that is, I guess, we'll call him wise, right?" Clay has gotten his injuries. He slowed down. He's not that two way player that he once was known for. He can still shoot the ball. But that's not enough for Golden State. So, therefore, I feel that he knew from the beginning, especially when it was in and out, he's starting, then he's coming off the bench, then he's back to starting again. I think he knew that there were trials, and they knew what they wanted, but it was kind of like, okay, you know, we're going to start you, but you're not going to finish the games. We're going to finish the games with Kaczynski. And I think from there, it was like, I think my time here is done. So, where do you think I was wrong in, in, in my points? I think in terms of that... He, like you mentioned that he knew, but he didn't know. 
like I think he knew from the jump. And it just throughout the mm. season, it just became more solidified. One hundred percent. So I'm saying what I said that Golden State had no intentions of resigning him. He had no but, intentions, and he he expected it. I'm thinking like that. That's where I could be wrong. Where you, I could be wrong, but I think he really expected to be re-signed, and he was owed a certain amount of money and so okay. a certain contract. So that's where I. That's why I disagree. I don't think. Gotcha. He, okay. I don't think he. I don't think he expected it. Or he, but he definitely acted like it. The way he's um. His, so some of the reports were a. He, so you were like you were partly close from. In terms of what I've been reading, he was upset that Jordan Poole got that contract, mm. like that extension, and he was upset that not upset, but like he just didn't like, as you said, where the franchise was going when mm. Wiggins got his contract. It wasn't mm. Draymond's contract; it was mm. like two guards that were kind of like they that they re-upped. He didn't mm. like that sign. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and it was like throughout the years, he was moody, like the last two, three years, they said he was extremely moody, like emotional, sensitive, Mm -hmm. just different, just different. Um, I think he saw the writing on the wall with those three signings. And as you said, in terms of the minutes distribution of who's playing guard, he wasn't even closing. He's not the same player. Mm -hmm. Corey even told him in the last like 20, 30 games, you're you're basically not the same player. You have Mm -hmm. to adjust your game. And I think he knew that, like, they weren't going to be resigning him. So, again, he's going to Dallas. He might resurrect his career for one year next year because of the excitement. I see him, I see him in the gym now training in the offseason and putting up shots. And I think that first year, he's going to be running off of adrenaline. But in terms of the second and third year, is it going to get them over the hump? Nope. That's what, league are, what league are you in? The fantasy was? Yeah. I mean, same league that we're all in. This, the um, S10. I'm listen. I'm I'm Ether. I'm pretty sure I asked for Clay for me. Yeah, for who? I don't know. But, but listen, we'll, we'll talk. We'll you, you you might have did, but you might not been been this year. <laughs> it might have been years <laughs> past. Hey, listen. I'll easily. I'll gladly take them off your hands right now. Oh my gosh. We'll talk. Yeah. All right. Yeah, please. I, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> stop this damn negotiating right now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've already tried to. I've already tried to. I tried to talk to Cal, and he just wasn't having it. So that's okay. I'm gonna leave him in the dark. We'll talk for sure. Okay, I should have been playing him up. I should have been playing up. He's gonna have a fantastic year in Dallas. He's gonna be six, four, five, four, five trades a game. Trust me, you don't. You don't need. You don't. You don't need to do all that because the moment that he got traded, the first thing I said, I wonder who has Clay. That's all I said. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we'll talk. Yeah, Julian, second team All NBA. Got it right now. I'm, I'm trying to sell him for you. Second team All NBA. He's gonna lead the league in threes. Yeah. Yo, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. Calvin's right. Calvin's right. That's what it is. That's the forecast. What they're expecting. <laughs> he's gonna be given a lot of minutes, a lot of shots up. They tr- they Man. signed him, so the GM's gonna want him to to be playing, and the coach is gonna want him to get his shots up. Yeah, he's and right. Listen, it, I got a Tyus Jones waiting for you if you want. Hey, but, Who? But, Tyson, please, please. But, but hold, well, hold we'll talk, he's, yeah, still, yeah, we'll he's, he's still a free agent, by the way. But um, yeah, he is. I can't believe it. Yeah, what the hell's going on? He's still a free agent. But, no, um, no, no, no. They're they're waiting. It's okay. I'm not I'm not worried about that. But the thing is, though, you're gonna have to add another player with that, though. I'll take a role player by by any chance. If we're gonna do Clay. And Taj Jones, I got. Hey, I got. Hey, we I gotta we still player. negotiating on this podcast. This is what we doing right uh, now. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but uh, but honestly, like it's um, I'm just kind of interested to see how he's really gonna fit in. Like, I, I like the move for him, and I like the move for Dallas because it showed in the finals that they needed more consistent shooting. You know what I mean? Because he's gonna he's gonna be able to start again. He's gonna take over that that role that Derek Jones just like vacated by going to the Clippers. At the same time, I'm like, you know, with me with Dallas, I'm like, as as good as they were, and and as as great as, because think about, it, they were a fifth seed making it to the finals it was in a tough conference. You know, kudos and my hats go off to them, but I think they, to me, they never solved the issue that I think was the most important uh, position to fill, which was getting that third creator. Like I, I think to me, like having especially the way it went down against Boston, like of course the Boston was a better team, they're outmatched. But it showed that they needed a third, not a necessarily a third score, but they needed a third creator, like somebody that they, they can that can break down the offense, even if it's for moments at a time. And I don't think Clay's gonna do that. You know what I mean? Clay's never Clay's never been the guy to do that, right? Like unless he's 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 working out with the Isaiah Thomas, like the original Isaiah Thomas, not the IT, not the IT four. Mm-hmm. 
But like, mm-hmm. I'm actually going to be doing that with him all off season, like to work on his handles. Like he's not that kind of guy. Like we all know that, right? Like he's a catch and shoot. You know what I mean? Take one or two dribbles and, and let it fly, right? Um, mm-hmm. So like to me, that's where I'm like, is Jason Kidd gonna like how? I wonder, I'm just interested interested to see how he's going to utilize him going forward. You know what I mean? Like he's going to save more money in Dallas for sure. We all get that too. You know, is he going to get some of the similar freedoms that he did in Golden State, being that it's a new team, being that it's a Luka centric and now Kyrie centric offense? I, I'm just interested to see how how it how it works out for them. But at the same time, Julian, to touch on your point, like like he had to go too. He had to go from from Golden mm-hmm. State. You know what I mean? Like you spent so many years on the team, and I get it for him. If I'm in, in his position, I get it. I think that's the hard part of like being a great player. Who's you know who's on the downslide of their career, but in your mind you're still you look in the mirror you you know you have that belief in yourself you still think you're that guy, but where the evidence may tell you otherwise, right? And yep, like he's a pillar for that franchise, and like he's one of the most important people in the history of that franchise. Look at what Golden State did these last like eight to ten years; it was amazing, and he was a a very very important part of that, right? But. I think coming off the bench last year was you knew that was going to backfire. That was tough, you know. And I think if he signed the deal, like even if he signed a deal to go back with Golden State, whatever that money was, it's kind of it, it reminded me of like remember when uh, Ray Allen was at the Celtics and before he like he decided to be a free agent and, and not be, be a free agent, but sorry, but he decided to go with Miami. Had he signed back with the Celtics, they were going to trade him within a year or two. You know what I mean? Mm. I think the same thing was going to happen with him here. Like, they would have just, within the next two years, they were going to flip him for somebody else. But I can't blame the team either at the same time because he hasn't been the same since game six of the 2019 finals. You know no. what I mean? So The, the it, injury, the yeah, injuries. The injuries. That's the what injuries. I mean. Like, the injuries. Like, he just, unfortunately, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's messed up how that happened between the Achilles and his knee. Like, we feel it for him because, you know, I think all three of us love Clay, but... It is what it is, man. Like, you know, they say the saying goes that everything ends badly. Otherwise, it wouldn't end, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so that, that's yeah. where we are with him now. So it's it's, it's going to be interesting to see how he, he, he latches on with the Mavericks. It's I think it's a new experience for him and for everybody. Part of it, too, with, 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 uh, with Clay, too, was that I felt that, like, last year, even, um, you know, I guess post, <laughs> po- pre or post um, uh, Draymond Punch, right? You, even in the preseason of last year, you were seeing like a twenty, like just off the championship. You the, the young talent that they had in the team, you could see like they were coming for Clay's job. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just. I think Steve Kerr prolonged it because he was sticking with the vets for so long. And exactly. I think, that, I think yep. it kind of backfired on him too. You know what I mean? Like that's why I questioned with Steve Kerr's coaching like last year and not so much this year, but last year I definitely questioned it because I thought he should have been playing those young guys a lot more. But you were seeing it; those those dogs were coming. You know what I mean? Those those guys were coming for him. So it's it is you know it is what it is. I think everybody needed a fresh start in the situation. But you know the big three of the Warriors weren't going to last forever. It's probably one of the great stories in NBA history, at least as far as I've seen, in terms of where these guys are drafted, the expectations. Nobody saw any of this coming with you know the the way the dynasty shook out. Right? Like it was incredible. It was an incredible ride. It ended with a twenty twenty two title, which. I don't think people would even expected that either, you know, but I did think once they won, I thought this window was going to be extended, but I thought they they mishandled the younger players, and now, you know, like, they are where they are right now, right? Like, yeah, I mean, even look, think think about with Kaminga. Like, Kaminga had to basically, like, bitch and complain for him to get the, the minutes that he even got. Yeah. Mm. You know, so that's, that's to tell you how, like, things were just in disarray in Golden State, right? So it is what it is. But uh, but let's get to the, the winners and losers of the offseason. Uh, the L.A. teams, Clippers and the Lakers, winners or losers? Losers. Yeah, both are losers. That's, that's, that's clear. Very clear. Very clear. Very clear. Very clear. <laughs> so, Not even worth discussing. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's worth discussing because, you know, before we started this podcast, there, there was some rants going on about the Lakers. So uh, I'll step back and give you the space, Anthony. Go ahead. The, uh, let's see how. How do we start this? All I got to say is this. If stats don't matter, can we just give the keys to AD now or what? I mean, sure. You don't, you don't want to give it I'm, to Bronny? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Why is everyone talking about this guy, Bronny? No one's talking about Connect. I don't get that. Hey, do, do we know what he sounds like? 
Can that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I man. don't know what he sounds like. Man, it's, it's, that's crazy. This guy went off at Tennessee. Went off. And no one's talking about this guy like he's like like he's like he might like, not even make he might not even make the roster next year. And like, he's a first round pick. I know. It's like the no, no, LeBron's they're... talking about LeBron's talking about both of them. Let's be real. Like LeBron said, like, is it's the steal? Yeah, he said that a few times. Yeah, Whoa, like, I feel like you're reaching on that one. No, no, he said it's the steal. And it and it was his favorite player in the draft. This is what he says. Of course, he's on his team now, that's what he's gonna say. But that's what he said. It's his, it was his favorite player in this draft. When did he say this? Oh man, I, I'll pull it up for you. But he did say that, one hundred percent. Man, come on now. No, I'm telling you, that's what he did say. Everything that seems to come out of his mouth is about his kid, and ain't nothing wrong with that. But let's be real here. He hasn't, to be honest, he hasn't spoken like pumping his tires of his kid, like promoting and talking. It's all more of Linka and like the 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 the, the scouting team, and they're trying to make those fake stories up and whatever, whatever. You know, it would look even worse if LeBron was, like, all up in the mic, in media, mic, talking about his kid. It would look bad. So he knows what he's doing. He can't, he can't do all that. He'll have that, others talk on it. But but that's the first thing I said, though. He said stats don't matter. If that's the case, give the keys to AD then. Stop mm-hmm. trying to be the guy that needs to come up with triple doubles. Why are we still doing that? <laughs> because there's nobody else on the squad. No, other we than don't AD. have to do that. Other it doesn't work. AD. It hasn't been working for the past two years. Well, Three. It, no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that um, you're wrong, but I'm saying if it's if it's not AD double double or triple doubles, and it's not LeBron, who else is it? Well, well, see, the money will tell you. you Got to stop. Got to stop hogging it all. One person. Yeah, that, that's true it. too. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. You know, but like, he he bring he brings in people. He brings in the fans. You, 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 TV you, endorsements. Oh, so oh, so we're oh, so we're only talking about revenue then. We don't no, want not only I'm saying that there's other no, you said that because of the money, like I'm saying you're saying that they are paid the most, LeBron yeah. and AD, so they should no, no, be no, no, producing. No. I'm, I'm only speaking of, of, about LeBron here. LeBron yeah, like, is damn near is damn near Max is not getting it. And he should not be getting that. LeBron is good, don't get me wrong, but he should not be getting this money. Tom, I'm gonna take a pay cut. My man, which free agents did you cop on this free agency? Zero. None. They failed on every. They missed on every rumored player that they they could have had. Yep. So what is this pay cut business? What is this about? Well, there, there isn't a pay cut. If you if you if you realize, like he signed, was it a three year deal? Which is for it was the max deal for him, right? I, That's I, what I'm saying. Well, it's, well, it's a lot of, I, actually, he, here's a theory I'm going to throw throw at you out here, guys. Listening to the Dan Levitard show last night, and um, David Sampson, who was the former GM of the Miami Marlins, is like a business exec, sports business exec now, and has his own podcast and stuff. He, he made this point. They threw this theory out there, which I thought was pretty interesting, and I was going to get you guys' opinion on this. But he was saying that the like he thought that not only did um, LeBron get the max, get his max, but he got more than the max, and he thought he circumvented the salary cap using Bronny James – as the extra money, and what, what? I thought so. Yeah, I thought that was you think, too. Which, I, thought, which you I was like, I well. never thought about it like that. I'm like, oh shit, because so you think that point nine million dollars is really LeBron's money? It, it's 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 a little extra kickback, yeah. At least that's what I thought. Point. I read too. Yeah, and I, I was like, I yeah. never thought about it like that. I was like, oh shit, that would make well, sense. I being thought that, that being, that, being again, it's a fifty fifth pick. Whatever, fifty six pick. Everybody gets a two way deal, or at the most, they get like you know maybe under half a million dollars. And to go hey, from I that getting immediately, a, yeah, I was like, so that, I think that that was the leverage, right? Like you, they're using Bronny to get his to to get the extra you know money to go over the max. Damn, how you think Uncle Sam feels about that? <laughs> Uncle Sam, bro. Hey, listen, he LeBron ain't getting taxed for that. That's Bronny getting taxed, and he gonna take that money if that's what we're talking about here. I mean, but his daddy's a billionaire, so... It, 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 yeah, I was going to say, what's the big deal? <laughs> so, <laughs> nah, man, listen, man. Listen, nah, nah, listen. Hey, look, every, if you don't think them cast is over here, nickel and diamond, shit, y'all tripping. Oh, I, I know I they are. You, I, no, we're not I denying that. You can't think about that. Well, I'm saying they're not losing sleep over that, I'm saying. No, 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 no not, 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 not the Lakers. I'm talking about LeBron. In terms of... If that's how if this is if this is his way of finessing it by saying, Hey, listen, give me my max plus max, what do you want to call it? 
give it through Bronny, which I again, yeah, I never thought of that. But that would as calculated as he is, damn, I wouldn't put it past him. But it would make sense. It would make logical it, sense. It would actually make yeah. shave off shave off a little, give this to, to Bronny. You're not losing anything because I'm gonna demand that I'm gonna ask for it anyways. And, See, and, that, that, and, that, and at the end of the day, it makes because I mean the four year <laughs> four year deal for for a guy that almost didn't get drafted and hasn't played uh, a, a summer league game yet was insane. Like that's actually crazy. The four the four year guarantee is crazy. But, so forget the money. The four year guarantee is is what I think has everybody like pissed off, right? So and that would make sense. Like that was that would be the only thing that would make sense. And this is I guess I don't know if this is allegedly or not, but you know I, I guess people are talking about it. So like to me that's what actually would make the most sense. But I guess to the to answer the question, yeah, both teams are losers. The Clippers, you know, especially if you're Steve Bomber, it's a weird position to be in now because you have to sell these <laughs> you have to sell the fans on this team with a superstar that hates the press. You know, Man, that, 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 alone would, to... that alone would make me sign Paul George at all costs. That's why this doesn't make but, any sense. But do you see the energy that guy has on a daily basis? I don't think he's really worried about that. I guess not. Well, but they they got no picks. They got no young players. To they speak got of. no picks. I mean, your 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 biggest op your biggest basically off season move is re signing James Harden. But you want to know something crazy though? Maybe they saw numbers change when they did pick up James Harden. I, there's certain teams that I feel that really want to win, and there's certain teams where I feel that put they put up a, a facade out that make you think they want to win, but really it's all about revenue generating. I just want to make sure that I have a percentage coming back in and I got this certain amount of money and I can use it to my disposal. If we get a championship, great. But as long as I can fool the masses, I will do that. I don't think Steve, Bob, he ain't trying to win. It don't make sense. Yeah, he is trying to win. You think man. he's trying to win? Of course. I, I, Look, I, I, the, he I, gave the okay to trade SGA and a thousand first round picks. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, SGA wasn't even terrible when he was with the Clippers. So that don't even make sense either. You gave SGA away all of that for Paul George. You gave a young asset and picks for an older player. That man ain't trying to win. Well, he wasn't that much older at the time, right? Like, how he old wasn't, was Paul but, George? Yeah, but he was we got to remember. Prime. He also, but he also yeah. broke his leg. That is the defining factor of this whole thing to begin with. You had a young player that was actually showing that he could be a guy. Now, for me, and I won't even lie, I didn't think SGA would be this guy that he who he is now. No, and he is killer. But so you gotta, that, al- but you gotta also understand, like you have Kawhi Leonard being recruited, and he's telling Bomber and Doc Rivers, "I will join your team if you mm-hmm. get Paul George." So they're in a in a situation where they can change the entire franchise mm-hmm. by getting Paul George. So it's not like they sent all these players out to OKC for for just for Paul George. It was essentially for Paul George and, and Kawhi Leonard. Leonard. Yeah, exactly. And I and I think to me, to be honest with you, it was a huge haul. But I think I'm being that the Clippers are trying to be this respectable entity in Los Angeles and win. Because I think Bomber is, if all else, he is competitive as, as well. I, I think I would have did it too, and, and at least in that, in that, and those eyes. And I think with him, he's like yeah, he's, not, yeah. he's not afraid to spend the money if he has to. Time out. Five years ago, who was the top team in the Western Conference? Like uh, at, at the at, at, at the end of that of the 2019 season. Yeah, I don't know because. Think about okay, it. Okay, put it together. No, no, hold on. Let, me, let me answer your question. The reason why I'm saying okay. that is because Golden State obviously made the finals, but Clay just went down, and then so did mm-hmm. and then so did uh, KD, and then he left. So, so are you telling? So, so, so are you so, telling so, me that so, the Clippers so the in flux. were the next team up? So are you saying the Clippers were the next team up after the Golden State Warriors? In? What, but what I'm saying is it was it was a, it, it was it was open for anybody to get it. Anybody, but that's but this is what I'm saying. The Western Conference is so tough. You think that moving SGA for Paul George and whatever moving SGA in assets for Paul George to team up with Kawhi Leonard was enough to get you a championship? There's no way in hell you think that it was going to happen in the Western Conference. You have to go through the Western Conference in order to get to the finals, and then you can see it's a conference. Yeah, there's no way. 
but but I'm 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 just trying to do the revisionist history here, right? Because like I said, I just I just mentioned what happened with Golden State. Houston was imploding because Paul George, not Paul George, but Chris Paul left, and they were changing team. They were they were changing. We weren't sure about the Lakers. They were actually they, they had just got um, Anthony Davis, and they traded a whole bunch of picks and players for them themselves too, right? And mm-hmm. there was a Blazers who made the conference finals, but nobody was really believing in them like that. So like that's what I mean. Like it, it was kind of up in the air. So I, like I, yeah. they, they went for it. I, I I can't I can't get mad at them for that. They went for it. But yeah, and then Kawhi's coming off uh, winning the championship. Yeah, like we've like, seen what he could do in the playoffs, what he could do, blah blah blah. He looked healthy. You, yeah, like, like, uh, like you like can't he, hate. I'm not hating on the move. Like it was no, it was all, a risk. All the way back, and they lost in yeah. hindsight. And in hindsight, they lost. It was a okay, bad let, move. Let, but okay, at let the me, moment. Let me let me let me read this out for you. Okay, so the Clippers in 2019 2020 they were the number two seed in the Western Conference behind the Lakers. You had the Nuggets, you had the Rockets, you had OKC, <laughs> damn, the Jazz, Mavericks, and Trailblazers. That's in the 2019-2020 season. Yeah. In the 2020-21 season, okay, we have the Jazz, Suns, Nuggets, Clippers, Mavericks, Trailblazers, Lakers, Grizzlies. Yeah, the COVID year. So that's the twenty. That, is that the 2021 season? That's that, that the COVID year? Yeah, and, and and the Clippers okay. made the Western Conference Finals that year. Okay, so they dropped two seeds. So then now we go to twenty one, twenty two season, and then the Clippers, damn, they're in the play up. They're in the plan. I mean, yeah, but they're they're again, in the, but they're in the plan because Paul George. I mean, Paul George. I'm sorry, uh, Kawhi didn't play that whole season. Hold on, but that's but this is what I'm saying. We always have to expect. Listen, worst case scenario, if we lose one of our top players, because they're going to be playing minutes, if we lose our top player, are we still able to hold a playoff spot until they are healthy again? So this is what I'm saying. This is my point. You may have gotten those two guys, but there's no way that you actually believe that you were going to win NBA championship. I'm only talking about the Western Conference. I'm not even looking at the Eastern Conference. So after you get out of the Western Conference, then you have to go through the Eastern Conference and do the exact same thing and win and win four games out of the seven. I don't think they were even set up to even win a championship. I, I don't <laughs> okay. know about that though, man. You I, got Kawhi, man. man. You I got Kawhi. You know that. what? No, see, we and we're riding off the high. We're riding off. We're riding off the high. The fact that Kawhi came in from when he was the Raptors and gave us a ring and then he left. No, 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 no. Stop that. Let's stop that right now, please. That's madness. We can't do that. We cannot so do that. What we would need to see is the Vegas odds. At what that Vegas moment. odds, man? No at that moment, when they traded for when when they traded for um, Kawhi and Paul, it was well, not traded when they. If I remember it, it was high. Like they they had. Really yeah, of course, of course, it was, it was high. high. They also it, they also had the Vegas odds. That, yeah. They also had the Vegas odds that the Philadelphia 76ers are, I think, what number two to come out. They're basically they're basically fitted to come out the Eastern Conference. I don't even believe that. No, I don't no the that point either. of me mentioning that is that the, the experts had their predictions. So if the predictions were that they had them high for the Clippers to finish, uh, to win to win it all or reach the Western Conference, mm-hmm. um, it would have given you a better understanding of what Bomber and the, and the management thought as well. And, and, you, and, right. and, and, what, and what you got to remember too, Bash, right? Like I think this is a bit of a rich, like, uh, like recency bias here because – Back in back in 2019, if you remember, that Clippers team was a tough team. They didn't have any stars, but that was a nice mm. team to watch. They made the playoffs that year, right? And and I think that, I forgot who their best player was, but like I think Lou Williams is one of probably one of their better scorers on the mm. team, right? Like that okay. that was a team that was missing a star, and then they got two. They gave up a, a like I said, they gave up a lot, like a lot so, for them. But I'm so, just, but I'm just saying like like no nobody was like oh these guys are screwed. Like they were like oh well. Like they could probably they could, they're going to contend them. We're not saying it was a guarantee they're going to win it all, but in terms of contenders at that point in time, you would have put them right up there with everybody else. They would have they would definitely be any sure. top four, top Come five on. list for sure. Me, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Before I take this, before I take this next sip, <laughs> my question is: this. Okay, if we're talking about experts, why are they working for Vegas? Why aren't they working for the team? I would love to have this person on the team. You think that our team will win? Well, tell me who else we need so we can be at the top. 
Listen, I'm a gambler. You don't want to go against the house, man. Like, you're, no, no, no. You're, no, you're actually right, but there's also something called traps. We don't want to get started on that. On what? Something called what? Trap games. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to trap, trap games. Yeah, but it's this either is... you're going to get fooled and bamboozled <laughs> by me. You want to put your money in it? I'm going to take but, your money. Yeah, but this is prediction forecasting the season, not a game. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> yeah. No, it, you can't trap a season. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. I, oh man, hey, hold on real quick. Let, let, oh, let, look, let, I'm let, out. Well, okay, make make your last point. Then I, I want to move it to the rest of the winners and losers list. So then, no, no, you you can carry on because okay. I just realized I don't have nothing else to sip on. So continue, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, winners and losers. Demar Derozan is he the winner or loser of this off season? <sighs> Ah, oh, that's a tough one. He yeah. wins. He wins. He gets a three-year deal at thirty-four. Is he thirty-four? No, maybe he is. But if he's if he is thirty-four and he gets three years, he's a winner. He gets three years. Like honestly, like and he goes to he stays on the West Coast with his family. Uh, Sacramento is going to win games. They're going to make the playoffs. Um. So yeah. So if you're looking at as an individual, yeah, he wins for sure. Individual, yeah, and 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 he's out of Chicago. Like that, Chicago wasn't going anywhere, right? With Levine mm-hmm. and and whatnot. So, and Team he's back home on the West Coast. Team wise, though, they didn't get better defensively. That's their problem. No, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, that that and it's that, not really go ahead. that's yeah. for sure. But I mean, but they replaced him. You know, Harrison Barnes for for Demar Derozan, which is it, it is an upgrade at this point. Even though I know defensively yeah, it, it takes a lot, but it is an upgrade. It it is an upgrade. Yeah, yeah, but. But I, I, I think he's a winner, not just because of that. Like, you know, he's getting that one last big contract with a team that's, I think at this stage, he's going to be the third best player on, which actually that's a really great position for you to, to be in. If you have DeMar DeRozan as your third best player on your team, I, I think that bodes well for you, you know what I mean, going into to any season. Um, but then also he got to be interjected into one of the biggest hip-hop beasts of all time. Like this guy was oh, yeah. walking on stage you, gonna, with his heart's content. Cow, cow, cow you, you're gonna prolong this one. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yo, he, yo, he represented one of the biggest moments of the Papa concert, man. Like this, this is this off season was a win for him. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it was, it was, it was definitely. It's all, Fair enough. On and off the court, this was, this was, this was a, uh, this has been a hell of a ride of an off season for him. I, I heard also that he had a, an offer on the table from from the Lakers, and he no, they turned didn't. it down. No, they didn't. That's what I, that's what I heard. Go, no, listen, leave the Lakers alone, man. Don't do that. I heard, me. and he chose Sacramento over LA. This is like just rumors I'm reading, right? So. Yeah, but but I, but I think too, it speaks to um, how the Lakers in the last decade or so has basically kind of been devalued overall, in a sense, because no free agent wants to go to the Lakers. At least that's what I've heard. Which is which is like. I mean, it kind of says everything there, right? It's it's crazy. Like they're still gonna make the playoffs, or let me rephrase that: they they're gonna fight for a plan. I think they're still gonna be because go. because again, I keep saying this over and over again. Nobody's talking about Memphis, man. Memphis is <laughs> we're sleep. I mean, I mean, I shouldn't say worst particularly sleeping, but I think a lot of people are sleeping on that team. And Ja is coming for everybody's heads. This year, hopefully, you know, ho- like, uh, right. you know, hopefully the knuckleheaded part is, is being parked, but he is coming for business. And I like the fact that they picked up Zach Eady. I really do. So I think it works. Well. I think it works well with them. You put Jaron Jackson at the four. Yeah, I think, I think, well I think that works really well for him. So I, like like that because of where where like those younger teams are coming up and the older teams are coming down, like, yeah, like, the, the Lakers have been divided to a point where, like, the DeMar DeRozan's like, nah, I'd rather, I, I, I'm going to be home in L.A. playing for the home team, especially based on the summer I, I've been having, and I'm going to shoot three hours up north? Like, it's I interesting. Know, I, I, heard, I heard because Brian messes with Drake. I don't know. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny shit. All right. uh, winners and losers, the New York Knicks. This is our last one. Oh, they're winners, man. Come winners. on. They're winners. They're winners. They they like they overpaid for um uh, OG and whatnot, but like holy, they got their four back. How did they play the overpay for him? 
right? But they got their players back, right? They got them back, right? And, so and traded for um for for Michael yeah. Michael Bridges too, which it was an over trade as well, right? Yes. How is he what, four, four first round picks? Was four, it four first or round, something five, ridiculous? Five five first round picks. Five, man, something so ridiculous. So, but they overpaid. Same thing what. Um, the Clippers did it for for Paul George back in those days, mm-hmm. right? But I can see why. When now you have done well, you wanna you wanna continue off of, off of last season, keep it growing, keep the the momentum going, keep the fan base going, keep everything going because this is new to New York, right? Winning, so mm-hmm. I get it, I get it, and I think it's worth it. It's actually worth the risk, just like for the Clippers at the time. Yeah. If they lose, so what? At least you, at least you know, as a GM, that you put everything in 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 their basket to win. And unlike, but the, they overpaid. And, 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 and they overpaid though. And unlike the Clippers, they still have picks remaining. They didn't give up all of their picks for them. That is true too. Right. Very so, true. So that's 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 the thing people <laughs> how, are forgetting. How did they get all those picks though? They they got those picks from trades in the past. Yeah, I believe so. They got from the Kevin Durant. Yeah. I so. Oh. Because I think we think because outside of OKC, they had the most future picks in the league. Mm. Only OKC had more. Right, hmm. so they, they have they have they have a lot of picks still. I, I'm I'm not sure they don't have as I forgot how much picks they have left, like future first round picks, but they still have enough that they can still do some stuff with it. So they didn't give up every. They weren't like the Clippers and gave everything up, right? But so, but it's, but, it's, but it's interesting because yeah, I, I didn't think I, I didn't think um, the Knicks were gonna be the uh, the Villanova Wildcats, the NBA version of them, but they they made it work somehow, man, and they're gonna be a tough team, like. I think they match up well with Boston defensively, especially because you're getting OG and Michael Bridges to to, to offset or at least to go against Tatum and Brown like that. I, I can't wait to watch those games like that. That Knicks Celtics rivalry. I'm not sure if it was really a heavy rivalry in NBA history, but that I mean, that's that, that's like an original six type of franchise that like it's back. It's up now. It's it's back. Right. Like that. That's going to be a hell of a matchup mm-hmm. to watch. And my other matchup that I want to see is. Michael Bridges' body versus versus Coach Tibbs. Coach Tibbs <laughs> is known to run like run you down into the ground like like a Kia or a Hyundai. So uh, Michael Bridges, if you guys know, he's the Iron Man of the NBA. He hasn't missed a game in his career. You're putting that streak against Coach Tibbs and the fact that he loves to to overuse players. Who's gonna win that battle? Is Coach Tibbs' mentality or is his um his system gonna win out or or is Michael Bridges' body gonna win out? Who's winning that matchup? That's what I want to see. I think Tibbs. So with that being said, you should probably trade Mikael Bridges too. <laughs> going back to the fantasy thing. What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but actually, you know what? I was I was gonna say this is the last one, but um, being that you know again, it's the it's the hometown team. Um, I know the Raptors haven't really done too much other than sign uh, quickly, but where, where do you guys see the, the season going next next year, at least from this vantage point right now so far? And then we'll wrap up. I think they're fighting for the next uh, top draft pick for next year. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a race for a Cooper flag right now. Ooh. Which, which, will, which will be the right strategy to take for next year because you're not winning it. You're not, you're not beating anybody in the East. Right, like with the teams that loaded up for this so, upcoming exactly. season. That's right? exactly. But they, I do like the core. Like I'm getting shitted on. I think they overpaid for quickly. They have to overpay, right? The, the, yeah, like they, they I'm telling those. people that. Yeah, but is it overpaid? No, no. I'm talking about the re-signing. No, no, no. The the trade I like for OG. That's one of the best trades that Messiah has made in the last two years. Getting Barrett and quickly for OG. That's an amazing deal. Yeah, it is. Um, no, I'm saying resigning quickly with 200 something mil. No, no, <laughs> one, 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 178 over five. It's about 35. Oh, a year. 178. Oh, yeah. once well, even even better. I like quickly. I like RJ. I do like RJ. How he played last year, at least. Um, I do like Barnes. So I like the core young players. Right, but they need more younger players. I hope they lose. I don't think they're going to go far. They're not going to make the playoffs. And I hope they don't make the playoffs. And then they get two picks <laughs> next year, right? They get Indy's pick, and they got their own. Yeah. So I think they got they got three first-round picks in the next two years. I like it. So so tank for flag? Fucking up yep. the flag? Fuck Yo, not up. only flag. The top. Remember we were talking. The top five picks next year. Yeah. And next year's draft is solid. Yeah. The top five picks are solid. Maybe they're going for VJ. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, edge goal. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The top five picks are nice. Yeah. They're really like like somebody that's going starting. Like who can start? Right? The, mm-hmm. the starting NBA players. So if we can get one of the top five picks, I'll be happy. But they're not winning, to answer your question, Cal. They're not winning. Like, <laughs> no, no, we, we, but they're going to be... I think we know that. <laughs> yeah, it's I, all about development. Like, developing quickly. Developing Barnes. Developing... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of, of Dick, but Grady. But, like, no. developing the, the, the draft picks that they drafted this year. Pause. In the think, G League or... You don't, think, you, don't think Grady, you don't think Dick is a... You don't think Grady's a sneak pick? No, I think he'll be... He could be a rotational player. Right, like in terms of his sh- of his shot, right? Because it's only one, one year, year, so I'm not yeah. saying he is. And he's young too. The jury is out. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. He's, yeah. Six, seven, young. he's six seven, but he can shoot though. That's the problem. Yeah, that, the thing is though, I just don't like his athleticism. Like, his, like he can't keep up like defensively. Like, and I don't see that improving. That being said, he's long. He can shoot the ball, and you need that in the NBA, right? So. Mm-hmm. So no, I'm not saying no. Don't get me wrong. I don't think um, he's not gonna. He's gonna be out the league. I just don't think he's gonna be that starting two guard that you know wins you games or something like down the line. I don't see that happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I like what we got going. I like the rebuild. Is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. We got young players and we got picks coming up. So I like it. Yeah, for no, what it is. I, I never for, thought, for I, what I, it I is. I didn't think about the like like I said, fuck it up for flag. I didn't think about that, but like that would be a a, a good angle to take. Oh Ooh. man, oh man, it would be a good ang- angle to take. But it's, and, and especially like I said, even even with the VJ kid too, like um, but the my story um candidate that we have every year, uh, Jalen Celestine, my nephew. He's um, you know, he's at Baylor right now, and. You know the the word on the street with that, that I think I told you guys both, or, or at least I told you, Julian, is that um, he's basically like believe everything you you read about VJ Echko, mm-hmm. believe everything you read, and what he's doing so far in these uh, these run ups up to the Olympics right now with Bahamas. I mean, he's he's tied with heel with scoring right now, and he's he's mm-hmm. he's seventeen or eighteen. So crazy, mm-hmm. yeah, he's that's a hell of a talent coming down the pipeline. So. You know, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. But you're right. Like it's 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 you know we we got to do what we got to do. I think in in the prognostic, like they have the Raptors mock, like finish the bottom five to be in the top five right now, like for next year. Yeah. So I'm like, perfect. We're not winning. When you're not winning, you don't want to be in that mid zone, that gray area. You're not winning. Yeah. You might as well just try, try to stack. Develop guys, the young guys. Yep. Just develop the young players, man. Get them better. Get them confident. Get them to you know. Be ready for for the upcoming years, for the next two or three years. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about right now. And they got I, the young pieces, so I feel like I feel like Washington's probably going to surpass them on the standings. That that'll be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be because, great. Yeah, I know because if you look if you look at it, like Washington's been at the bottom of the pile, Charlotte's been at the bottom of the pile. Washington's kind of they they made some great picks this year, so you can't really expect them to be at the bottom of the pile. I'd be really suspect if you see them at the bottom of the pile still and other teams ahead of them. Who did they I pick feel up like again? Some, they got Sar in the draft. Um, I'm not crazy about Sar, but I guess we'll see. Me well, neither, no, but, 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 we're, but, but we're talking about what that team needs, though. They got uh, JV. They got Valanchunas at the big. Oh yeah, nah. that's right. Oz, mm. You put Sar at the four. It seems like teams are now starting to do this whole twin towers thing now. I've been, After I've been, I've been Minnesota, it for the last couple of years, man. It's... Yeah, Minnesota resurrected it, and now everyone's trying to kind of follow follow suit and then just kind of go with it. I think that with what Washington has done in terms of picking up Valentine's for the three years and then picking up Sar, uh, they're, they're I'm not the- afraid of that. That those two players, not a chance. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm not saying to be scared of them, but in terms of them actually picking them up, in terms of having a setting up a, a starting five that's legit, when you start developing them, they, they will become a problem in the Eastern Conference at least. Yeah, sorry, it would be, but not Valanciunas. His time is gone. He no, couldn't even get minutes in um in New Orleans. But that's because of Williamson. They were playing Williamson at the at, at the five spot, which is weird. But because he's that explosive, they worked for them. But it didn't. He was getting exposed on the pick and roll. He's just really slow footed. He's really yeah. slow, and it's just uh, he doesn't um, stretch the floor. Yeah, he's really he he look he was exposed. He and, was really bad. And then don't forget your boy Poole, Julian. I think he's having a comeback season next year. Oh God, have your, your mercy, guy, your guy. 
Oh, fuck. I will say, I will say, <laughs> he did better the last in the second half of the season, though, or he did better in the, in the twin last twenty games. I'll say, yeah, because he came off the he, bench. He could, and I would say he couldn't do any worse. I was just he couldn't do any worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that 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 is that is that is such a crazy fall from grace. Like that was that was just wild. From think about it, two years ago this guy was signing his contract, fresh off a chip that he played a, a heavy part in. You go from that to being like the Shackton the fool, first team, second team, third team, all up, all Shackton within a span of like eighteen months. It was wild, man. Like. It was it was wild. That that drop off was crazy. Again, if you're listening to some of these rumors and reports, his head really got inflated, you know, during that off season and it you know, and I think that punch changed his life, unfortunately. For all parties involved, to be quite honest. For all I parties think, involved. I, I think from what he said to Allah, where he's like, Why can't I do what Clay and Steph does? I was like, Oh yeah, he's tripping. That's mm-hmm. he kinda let you know, like, okay, his 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 mind is definitely something. Exactly. Yeah. There's no exactly. you can even think remotely that you should be on the same level. Of those two, that's crazy. Yeah, and that's that's not to say that and he didn't. Is, and a little help. disrespectful, but I, you know, at the same time, he's an NBA player, so you know these guys have a different mentality too, right? So, but go on. But then, see now, when he makes comments like that, I'm like, yeah, I can kind of see why Draymond punched his lights out. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, you can't win with guys like that, to be honest. Selfish or narrow-minded or egotistical. You know, it's, you just can't win. You just can't win at all. Oh, you can't build a winning culture. Mm-hmm. No, the the the, the, hum, the humble factor is like that really rained on his head this this past season, man. Just the only, like I said, the only part that that I you know maybe he enjoyed. I don't know what his uh, his status is outside the court, but like. The only factor that 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 was like probably positive last year was that he was actually in Chocolate City as a city overall. <laughs> Everything else outside of that, oh, and then he got paid. Outside of those two factors, it was just it was just a shit show last year. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I, so I don't know what's gonna happen with him if he's gonna start or continue to come off the bench. But again, coming off the bench for one of the best teams in the league, as opposed to coming off the bench for one of the worst teams in the league. Yo, the parallel is crazy. It's it's really crazy, man. It's it's re- like that. The swing of the pendulum is just it's insane. It's insane, and it's and it's really telling of what type of player and person he is. Yeah. Because on a team like Washington, he should be he's young, but he should be one of the leaders, right? You're getting to pay exactly. the most. Um, you bring brought in from a winning culture, like all those things, and he still couldn't take that role on. He couldn't do it. It's not him. Yeah. So it's it's telling. And, and and last thing before we go, um, just really quick, just to touch on Kawhi one more time. I'm surprised that people are surprised and or mad that he that he had to withdraw <laughs> from the USA team. I was to be honest, I was shocked that he was actually gonna be even playing in it. I was shocked. Yo, but Calvin, him, him, the guy went Embiid. for one day. Him and Embiid. <laughs> but, he, but but Calvin, the, the the shock is that he played one practice. Like one he actually went and practiced one practice. <laughs> And he got hurt. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way he left healthy. There's no way because yeah. he went there healthy, and he pulled out because he got hurt in the first week or something bothered him, and he pulled out. Because th- 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 there's no way anybody will go unhealthy, right? And and right. get like unless they did a test. I don't know. I'm. Sh- I I don't know. Well, it's they, they, mind boggling. They, they said that um, that. Basically, did um, because remember Ty Lue is one of the assistant coaches there too. So between Ty mm-hmm. Lue, between the Clippers organization and Team USA, they all agree that like they, that he should basically withdraw. So it wasn't just like a Kawhi said, "Hey man, I'm load managing. I'm done." Like <laughs> I don't think it was. It was on. It, that wasn't his decision alone to make. I think that was that was a, a, a universal decision, and I, and especially considering that like Paul George is gone. They really have to preserve. They got They basically got to bubble wrap uh, Kawhi at this point. They got to treat him like like right. our, like our parents' couch from the eighties. So why did? <laughs> so why do you think they decided for him to go to like to withdraw? Why do you think that? Yeah, because he probably wasn't looking right. That's my point. He probably wasn't looking right. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that. Like, oh, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just. I'm just saying. Like, I, I think it was a collective. A collective thing that well, he should just—he okay. should just. His knee's good right now. They're saying like his knee's good right now. 
they should probably just preserve it for the rest of the summer. And I think they said that they said the the word kind of came from Bomber and them. Like, like he's looking good. Let's preserve him. Like we we don't want him playing in the Olympics. Can you imagine the energy when he came in that office talking about you should not play Kawhi Leonard? He probably was screaming, and bouncing off tables. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> this is my. He was healthy, and something they saw as a collective, however you want to say say it. They saw something wrong, and they reported it to the Clippers. They reported it to Kawhi and said, "Listen, this is you don't look healthy. Take the summer off." Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened. It had to been. He showed up. <laughs> he showed up. <laughs> if he wasn't healthy, he would never have showed up. Something tweaked, as always, or or they did some type of physical assessment and found something, right? Like your knees, like not a hundred percent or whatever. Go home. Yeah, but for sure, for sure. Come on, man. And and, and also and also to add, because I mean, I I guess the three of us. Well, I know for sure I'm watching uh, while we're doing this, watching the exhibition game between Team Canada and, and the U.S. I'm watching. Like, yeah. So I, I, so Kawhi Lee's and Derek White uh, replaces Kawhi, yeah. which is fine. But you know, there's some, 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 somewhere in Atlanta um, or Boston, Jalen Brown is pissed. Yeah, he has to be. He has a right to be. I can understand that, but they need defense, though, man. That's what they were saying. A little yeah. bit the more defensive player. They have enough scorers. Yeah. That, yeah. that team is stacked. They don't need more offensive power. It's it's true, but my God. You you win the conference and finals MVP. And, <laughs> and, and two of your teammates are there. Exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it, it's 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 crazy. I, I would feel disrespected, too. I really would. No, but imagine, sure. imagine the narrative from everyone else, though. Why, why we got so many Boston Celtics players on this team, though? What's going on? I'm telling you, somebody's going to be butthurt at some point. <laughs> Sorry, three players. Drew Holiday. Three players. Yeah. yeah. Drew, now Derek White, and then Tatum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And the MVPs are home watching. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The optics, <laughs> the optics of that doesn't look great. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't look great. Well, well, you know what, fellas, let's wrap this up. But, man, thank you guys for, for having a, a spirited conversation um, of, of the NBA offseason to wrap up the offseason so far. Unless something crazy happens between now and uh, the Olympics or, you know, between now and, and, the, off, and, the, and the actual, like, training camp or the study NBA season, you know, I, I figure we kind of touched on pretty much most of the points that wrap up this uh, past season here. And I guess we'll probably talk again during the Olympics because I'm sure there's going to be some interestingly great matchups. Uh, there's some. Listen, man, the world is coming, man. The world is here. <laughs> this, I think yeah. this, this Olympics is going to be really entertaining. <laughs> it's going to be really entertaining. There's some yeah. strong teams right now. Yeah. Each division. We're I think watching it's two teams, of them right? right now. Four yeah. and four. Yeah, we're watching two of them right every, now. Yeah, every team is solid. Every team is yeah. pretty much solid. Germany, Spain, Australia. Yeah. Um, Serbia, US, of course. Serbia, right? So Serbia, yep. Yeah, so they're so all solid. Everybody's solid. Oh. Greece, and you know the great thing, yeah, Greece is the great thing is like this year America is putting putting in all the best players. So now this is to me is a true measuring stick for all for the rest of the world. Yeah, right now, right? Because there's no excuses now. Like okay, we didn't have like AD or we didn't have Curry, and you know, whatever, LeBron. Yeah. Or oh whatever. my gosh, I was hoping you wasn't gonna say his name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. We didn't have um, Edwards. We didn't have Edwards, Anthony Edwards, right? So no, no. Everybody's there now. So this is a true measuring stick, like right now, to see where everybody is for, in the world. Because Germany won like the World Cup or whatever, right? Yeah, and, like, last you know, year. it's not the same if, right? So it's not the same if all the U.S. players are not there, right? In my eyes, in terms of a true measure. Well, what I mean, of where well, they stand. Well, well, I mean, Edwards was there last summer too, right? He was their best player. Oh, was he? Yeah, him and him oh, and Albert. Well, so my bad. Albert, okay, so. Yeah. But I shit, get what you're saying. My though. bad. They, they missed. They, they, you know, they didn't have all their stars. Like Tatum wasn't there. Like I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Plus, and also too, again, man, don't sleep on France, man. I'm telling you, France, yes. this Olympics, but especially the next Olympics, man. Everybody, for future for the oh future. Jeez, you, you, yeah. Everybody got to run for their lives. And, yeah, and, test and, the waters, man. Something ain't right over there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's something. Something's up, man. Between the France soccer team being all black now, <laughs> and, 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 oh, it's always been. Yeah, actually, you're right. That's for the true. most part, you're you're right. 
Um, but between <laughs> between them and 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 this and this basketball team, like it's 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 interesting. And and kudos to the Spurs for picking up uh, Harrison Barnes and and CP three. I think Paul. that's I think that's actually Leaper really team. good for for the development of Wemby, man. Like sleeper team, I think they go in the playoffs, man. I think they could. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they could. Like Wemby's that good. Wemby's that good, and yeah. and he basically yeah. played the whole season on a, on a minutes restriction. He averaged twenty one and twelve yeah. on a minutes restriction. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I thought was crazy before we ended? Like Chris Paul goes, like he chose San Antonio because um, he was guaranteed. He was told that he's going to be starting and playing. He was looking for a. Pl- this is what he said in a quote: "I was looking to play then versus winning a chip, and I was told I'm going to play." It, it always baffles me when these older guys like like <laughs> Clay and even Iverson. Like you know, when you get to that end of your end of stage of career, you're still wanting to play. And I like it because that competitive nature. Yeah. But it's that self evaluation, that self assessment is, is not there. I think when these older players get to that stage, they they feel they still got it, and they are not owed it, but. They are deserving of it, but anyhow, that was—I thought that was funny. He goes, "I'm so he's starting. He's a starting point guard. Yeah, <laughs> he's a starting point guard. Oh, which, man. Which, which is fine. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to be playing thirty-five minutes a night. You know what I mean? Like, well, you know, why wouldn't he? Why won't he? He might argue for it. He may argue for it. <laughs> he's, he may argue for it. Have you seen his injury history in the last ten years? He's not going to make that, it through a full season doing that. But, but that comes <laughs> in the playoffs. We're not worried about that. <laughs> I mean, even, even the regular season, he's not gonna last. Not not to that degree. Nah. Not he'll to, be all right. He'll not, be right. Regular season, he'll be all right. But I, but I think like I think that's that's a that's a great move for him though. And, and to your point, Julian. Oh like, yeah. It's it speaks to the. I'm gonna say delusion, but not in a bad way because that like that mentality like where they can't see that they're slipping is what also makes them great. It what's made them Hall of Famers too, right? So it, it's, it's it so, does. So asking it does. to have that that self that's to do that self check on themselves, like they're not going to do that when they've been that successful, yeah. right? Like it's tough. I agree. No, it is, and it's yeah, it's what made them who they are. That's their fabric of, you know, that got them to where they are. Yeah. But I just I thought initially I liked the moves by bringing in some veterans for those younger players like Harrison 100%. Barnes and CP3. Yeah. I thought that was the 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 motive on the move yeah. in terms of mentoring. Um, those guys, right? And then they draft a young point guard too, right? Who the ca- ca- castle? They draft Did he draft castle, castle? Yeah, they draft the castle. Right, so like you got CP three there to mentor. So, but then I, I was just he didn't talk about mentor. Like I'm sure he doesn't have to say it out loud. He is going yeah. to do it. No, he will. But do it. it just sounded funny. It, like he that didn't come out of his mouth though about mentoring. It. <laughs> he just said, "Yeah, I, get, I have a chance to play," and that was my first option yeah. before winning. I wanted to play. I'm yeah. like, okay. And and okay. he probably thinks he has maybe a couple of years left because he only signed a one year deal, you know what I mean? And, and yep. maybe if he if he can last one more year, then maybe he'll ring chase for that last that last uh, season. But I don't think he got anything more than a one year deal. No, I think no, he no. just took what he can get. Yeah, but you got to remember, Pop only has one more year left too, though. Who? Pop. He only has one more year. Oh left. yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah. links with that. But I think Pop is coming back. He's coming back. He's like, you got Wemby there. He's yeah. not. If it was no Wemby and the team was trash, he would have retired. retired already. Yeah, he, yeah. No, he he's not going nowhere. Yeah, and who who's got who's got? I know I don't want to bring it back to fantasy. Ah, shit. Julian has Wemby. All right, we gotta go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I do. Yeah, man. Yeah, okay. My my team was pretty nice until it fell apart in the playoffs because I had like eighty percent of my squad injured at the same time, but. <laughs> Before I play the outro, um, my bad. So if you were winding back to the, the Paul George segment, I, uh, I made a statement that Paul George said that MB told him that he was going to spread the floor for him. And I went back the next day after recording this and I listened back to it. And it was my bad. And I, Paul George meant that he was going to spread the floor for MB. So I just want to make that correction. My fault. I apologize on behalf of South Shore Ave and myself. And, you know, I definitely owe you guys some money. So, um, you know, you're going to get your money back. Send me an email address so I can e-transfer you or send the EBT or, uh, or or give me your PayPal address. And, uh, and I'll get that over to you right away. All right. My bad. My bad. Now here's the outro. Thank you for checking out the latest edition of the Ave podcast. Special shout out to Julian, a.k.a. Jules the Commish. 
as well as Anthony Bachelor for hopping on and having a, a, a funny discussion on the NBA offseason. Um, so next week, um, there's not going to be a new episode. I'm going to put out a I was inspired to put out a memory lane episode <laughs> because and I didn't get a chance to do this uh, last month. But, you know, being that it's the five year anniversary of the Raptors winning the first NBA title in the history of its franchise, um, I wanted to do a little bit of revisionist history because I also kind of call it the Kawhi year. And what I'm going to do is instead of using one particular episode, I'm going to splice a few episodes together, basically from telling the story from the beginning when he got there uh, to when they were going through the playoff run to when they won the championship until he left. All right. So just stay tuned for it next week. That one should be a lot of fun, a lot of jokes. Going back and listening to some of those episodes made me actually laugh out loud at certain points. Um, so I, I'm going to share some of those ones with you uh, next week. So be on alert for that one. All right. Also, um, if you haven't gotten your tickets yet for the uh, Sunday afternoon carnival barbecue party, you better get them now. Last year it was sold out. Uh, this year we're trying to do the same. So please be on alert to get those tickets. Uh, you can DM me. You can uh, hit me in the comments or you can uh, go to TicketGateway.com slash Carnival Barbecue Party 2024. Um, make sure you get those tickets now because, like I said, last year was sold out. So don't sleep on these tickets, man. It's, um, you know, we've, this is year 16 right now, which is crazy, humbling, as always, to, to still be able to put something out like this every year. Uh, but, you know, we're back at it this year again, the year 16. Please get your tickets now. And also hit the like and subscribe button for this podcast, wherever you're listening to this podcast. Hit those five stars, as always. And make sure you check out the catalog over at SouthShoreAve.com. Once again, that is SouthShoreAve.com. For Julian, a.k.a. Jules the Commish, and Anthony Bachelor, this is Cal C. And you just tuned into the latest episode of the Ave Podcast right here on South Shore Ave Radio. All right, until next week, to the Memory Lane episode, I'm out. Have a great weekend. Peace.